The first species of amphibians to be reintroduced back to Mountain Lake is the Pacific Chorus Frog. It's a very common species throughout its range, from Baja California up into Oregon, Washington area. But in the city of San Francisco, it's on the verge of extinction. There's really only one functional population left, and that's in the Presidio. In a seasonal pond that is getting hit very hard by this drought that we're in, so it's a very unstable situation for this last functional population of chorus frogs in San Francisco. So we chose to use that population as our source population to bring back into mountain lakes. One thing we had to be considerate of was chytrid fungus, which is a fungal pathogen that these frogs, that population is in fact carrying. One way to translocate these animals while sort of bypassing the fact that they have this fungal pathogen present is to move their egg masses. The egg masses cannot actually hold this fungus because it doesn't have the appropriate substrate like the adult frogs or the tadpoles. They actually can hold the fungus. So we chose to move egg masses We wanted to limit the amount that we took so we didn't harm the source population, but we also wanted to maximize the amount that we could get into Mountain Lake to avoid genetic bottlenecks and effects that small founder populations have on long-term viability of reintroduced populations. So before collecting from the one population, we designed and built these cages that are predatory exclusion cages. So even though we remove the non-native fish, which are the main reasons why those, these frogs are, were extirpated from the lake, aquatic invertebrates like dragonfly larvae, crayfish, the non-native crayfish that are in the lake, all of these invertebrates are predators on these freshly hatched tadpoles. And this is a female. You can see all the eggs right down here. There are probably over 100 on this female. And this is just one of many. There's a ton of them down there. So we created these exclusionary cages that I put out in the lake a month ahead of time to allow them to develop algae inside, which is the food source of the tadpoles. And I monitored those through time to make sure that no invertebrates made it into the cages, and none did. So we took these egg masses and we put them in these cages where these tiny little tadpoles hatched out in the presence of no predators and a lot of algae. The perfect place for tadpoles to be reared out. And we just allowed them to develop and continue to monitor them through time. Eventually, we ended up moving around 80 egg masses. And I took macro photography of each egg mass so that I could then go back later and count each embryo. And there was roughly about 2,800 embryos. The best stage to release these little guys is when they're just crossing over from tadpoles into froglets. So when they have all four legs out and their whole body physiology changes over from little gill-breathing tadpoles to terrestrial lung-breathing frogs that we know of. So during that transition, they start to absorb their tail and they're not eating. And they're starting to use the upland habitat a little bit more. So that's sort of the ideal time to release them. The north arm of Mountain Lake is now an ideal habitat for froglets and dragonflies and damselflies. It's very sunny, very slow flowing water and a lot of emergent vegetation. It's sort of a nice hybrid between terrestrial and aquatic. The vegetation is general habitat, so it's protection from birds, other predators that are going to try to go after these froglets. It's basking habitat. These, these little guys like to hang out in the sun and just relax and stay warm. It's habitat for their food source, little leaf hoppers, other things like midges and mosquitoes and a lot of little invertebrates that are living, emerging out of this wetland habitat that are going to be the ideal food source for these frogs as they start to grow. So that habitat is ideal for release of these froglets.